Hello, welcome to another RESPRO video. This tutorial is going to cover how to create a master archive site and then set that site up on multiple domain names and use it as your starting site for all of your other projects. And this is what you're looking at on the screen right now is an example of what we typically would start with as our master archive starting site. And then what we would do in the process is what we're going to show you in this video. We're going to show you how we take an existing master archive site, uh, what we call our starter site, and then how to set that up on another domain name. And then also, if you're interested, we will also in this video cover at the very end how to tie in all of these other websites into your master database. OK, so to begin with, you need to log into WordPress and then you need to make sure that everything in your admin panel has been completely updated. So anything in here that needs to be updated, like I just found this one that needed to be updated, uh, needs to be updated, themes, anything that you see here so that this is going to be as fresh and current as possible when we zip this thing up into an archive. I like to use a plugin called Duplicator. It is a free plugin. Uh, you do not have to use Duplicator. There are many other alternatives, and I just happen to use it. I like it. It works for me. Uh, the principle is the same. You need to, no matter what, before you create your master archive, there are a couple things that you're going to want to consider doing. One, you're going to want to consider dumping out your data, for example, and then rerunning it if this is the master database site that you're going to be using. The second thing is, is do you want this master archive to already be tied into a master database to begin with? So that, for example, if I was going to make an agent site out of this master, I would already have a cron job running uh, to, you know, every hour on the database to make sure everything was updated. And so then I would not want this to be a, a duplicate of all of that function. What I want this to be in this case is to be tied into uh, maybe as an agent subdomain or an agent site, you know, agent.com. And in that case, what you would do is you would open up Res Pro, jump into the site config. And if this, even though this might be the master database, what I would go ahead and do is go ahead and get it configured and set yes and set all this to the username, password, database. And as long as it's on the same server, you don't need to change the IP or add an IP or any of that kind of stuff. That is for when uh, you're trying to tie in a website from a remote server into your local server, and then you're going to need that IP address to the master IP uh, to the master database uh, IP address. OK, and then another step, and there's more about this. We're, we'll have a dedicated video for this. But the functionality is for in this video is, yes, we would want to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and tie this in as an example into another um, database that I already have pre-existing. Okay, so I've got that already in here and saved. I'm just going to go ahead and save that now. And so that would mean that when I set this up on the new website, domain.com, whatever, that it's already going to be tied into the master database. And it just eliminates one more step in the process of setting up a new website as a clone. All right, so that part is done. The next thing that you need to do is you need to go ahead and deactivate the plugin. So we're going to deactivate the plugin. And like I said, if you wanted to uh, really make the database and everything as small as possible so that your installer will go fast as possible, you will want to uh, truncate the listings database table. Don't delete it by accident. If you don't know what you're doing, that's an easy accident. And if you don't have a backup, then you would be in trouble. So here is what I have. I have a plugin in here that I use called Adminer. You can Google it. It is literally called Adminer. And you just click on this. And if I was to do this, and which I'm going to do for this example, 
is I have a listing DB right here. This WP Realty listings DB table with 24,000 listings in it. We're just going to make that a little bit smaller because you see here, uh, well, this doesn't actually show a size. Let me see if it does over in the far column. No, this one doesn't show a size. But that's probably, you know, at least 20 megabytes or so. So we're just going to make it a little bit smaller by truncating, emptying that database. Okay, so that part is out of the way. The next step that I like to do before I make a master archive is I like to go over to uh, the file manager here. You can either get to it here, which we'll just go ahead and do that in cPanel. I'm using cPanel and you would just go into the file manager. Oh, and another thing, if you do see any kind of errors, any error logs, you need to go ahead and you should, just to make your database and your package very small as possible, delete any error logs, any place that you would see them. So we'll get rid of that one, because your, your objective here is to make the smallest footprint, the smallest archive as possible. All right, now what you're going to do is, you, this is the very important step. You need to go into WPR Admin and anything in here as well, if you see anything. This is a project site, so there may be a few log errors in here. I think that's the only one I see. Um, so what we would do here is rename this file. Now, some of you may not have cPanel, and in that case, you you can always use the free um FileZilla. It is uh, one of my favorite uh, FTP clients that I use it all the time. And as you'll see here, you could go in here and you could use FileZilla and it's the same thing. What I like about FileZilla is just fa much faster, easier, plus you can drag and drop right off your desktop. Uh, disadvantages, it does not include any kind of editors or anything like that. As you can see, the config file has been renamed. So the next step is we're going to go ahead and and so at this point, we're ready to go ahead and click on the duplicator. I just click on next, next, next. I go through the entire process. My servers are all correctly built uh, with every option, zip archive, etc. The only thing that uh, you may run into is if your hosting provider does not include zip archive uh, or some of the other things that may be required. Um, so as you can see here, size check, basically it's letting me know that it is going to be a large, uh, you know, all the images and everything I do have in this. That's another thing. Uh, if you're going to do images, you will, you know, pull those image folder out of your directory. You definitely want to stay under 500 megabytes if possible for your master archive. When you zip that, it'll be much smaller. So we're just going to go ahead and say, yes, I see that. Go ahead and build it. Okay, so while this is going on, there is a, a, the next step for what I would be doing in the meantime. I jump back over here to my cPanel, and I know that the new website is going to need a new subdomain on this particular project that I'm doing. So whether you're doing a new .com or a new subdomain, and you're using Plesk or Webmin or cPanel, as in this case I'm using cPanel, it all varies. This is a step that I'm going to be doing using cPanel, but you may be using Plesk or Webmin or one of the other free panels that are out there. So the very next thing for me is I need a database and I also need a subdomain. So as you can see, I can click on subdomain. I'm going to call this one Utah 2. Okay, and then the next thing is, like I said, this is just the way mine is. Yours may be different. I'm going to go ahead and create. Okay, so my next step is I'm going to need to create a database. I'm going to go to my MySQL section here in my cPanel. I'm going to go ahead and create a new Utah 2 database. Make sure when you create a database that you give all privileges. Okay, so I have a new database and I'm ready for that installer. So let's go check on the packages. All right, the packages have completed. 
So what we will do now is go ahead and download the installer and download the 138 megabyte download that I ended up with. So you can see that the compression compressed it down by about half or maybe actually a little over half. You also see that the duplicator comes with many new features and, and links and, and they even have videos for their product as well. So if you're not comfortable with your basic knowledge of how to use these things, it is a good idea to go ahead and review their documentation. Okay, so now I have completed the download of the installer and the archive. I'm going to go back to the cPanel. I'm going to go back over to the file manager. I'm going to refresh everything over here. I need to see where my new subdomain is. There is my new subdomain right here. And so the next step is, is that you need to actually get your zip archive and your installer file in here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to simply upload using the upload option from cPanel. Okay, while that is uploading, I can go back over to my file directory do a reload. Of course, I have so many installers that it starts to rename them, so I do need to rename that back to just regular installer. Okay, and there is my zip archive. To finalize the next step, we need to actually go to the subdomain, and you may need to actually take the installer.php Depending on your host, you may go to your host and you will not see this file. Uh, sometimes you do need to do a slash and type in installer.php in order to actually see the installer uh, script. As you can see on my server, it will actually show you this, but there are plenty of servers that we have to work with that when we come to the screen, there is absolutely nothing. Uh, or there's an error message of some sort. And then in that case, what we have to do is we have to type in a slash and actually do the installer.php and hit the enter. Okay, when you get here, this is really simple. Nothing to do except for just go ahead and check on a few things. You want to make sure that the process is going to go through without any errors. And then the next thing you need to do is go ahead and put in your database and down here you can ignore the options. Uh, nothing really to do down here unless you have done something where you need to have some kind of troubleshooting. We never need any of these other options for any of our projects. What we only need to do is just click on test database. Make sure that everything is a success. This is very important. There's no need to continue if you can't get a, a complete green light success here. Click next. Agree. At this point, you can go ahead and click Site Login, and it will be the same admin password as your master site. Very important to go ahead, if you're using the Duplicator plugin, to remove the installation files and clear the build cache before you proceed. Once you've done that, you can go into the plugins, activate the RestPro plugin, Go ahead and visit your web page and test your listings. Now you may remember at the beginning of the video, I truncated, emptied out the database, but I also connected this master archive to another database. This is actually a Florida database that I connected to. This is the MFR Florida database. So that's why I have Florida listings already showing up on this website. That is a great example of the how to create a master archive create a new subdomain or new domain, and then once you've done all of that, go ahead and set up as many new websites as you want to. Well, that will conclude this video. Any questions or comments, please post below or in the forums at respro.com forums. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>